I think we can all agree, this is not the same as this. This is not this. But can we agree on what this is? A bike lane? A pedestrian thoroughfare? A traffic nightmare? Cause for a bicycle party? Let me sort it all out for you on this episode of Point to Point. Imagine you're a city transportation planner. You're trying to build out a network of bikeways on quiet neighborhood streets, allowing bikers of all abilities to access commercial corridors, parks, and other city amenities. You find a nice, sleepy one-way street leading past one park and straight to the lakefront and the city zoo. It should be easy to add a bike lane here, right? A no-brainer. So why was one such bike lane in Chicago delayed more than four years by opposition from residents? Now, not all bike lanes and bike paths can be universally loved. They can't all be like Chicago's lakefront path, winding along the lake, providing 18 miles of recreational access to Chicagoans and visitors. Drivers are minimally impacted by this path, and in fact, they have their own eight lanes on Lakeshore Drive, so it's hard for anyone to argue against the value of this bike and pedestrian infrastructure. On the other hand, the ones that take away capacity from cars can be particularly contentious. But this street in Chicago, Dickens Avenue, was never a street with significant vehicle counts, Check out a few Saturday afternoon clips from last summer. Hardly a vehicle in sight, and there are several reasons for that. It's one way going west, so it can't be used to access the lakefront. Oz Park blocks traffic a few blocks from the lake, so it's not even a good through street if you're leaving the lakefront. It has stop signs almost every half block. It doesn't cross the Chicago River. Yet all those factors that make Dickens a poor choice for cars are reasons it was and still is a great destination for bike traffic. Plus, it was extra wide for a one-way street, making it possible to build a contraflow lane in the other direction. So why the delays? Well, some residents argue that bikes would go too fast, endangering pedestrians, particularly in Oz Park. Others claim that the bike route was unnecessary, since Armitage, one block to the south, already had two-way bike lanes. Still others objected on the grounds that city funds would be better spent on other projects, including improvements to the existing Armitage lanes or adding bike lanes in underserved parts of the city. As I get into the merits of these arguments, and the unexpected part of the project that ultimately ended up being the most contentious, let me take you on a quick tour of what Dickens looks like now. Yes, after four years of designs, community meetings, and redesigns, the Dickens Greenway finally opened in January. The total build-out ended up being just over a mile long, with curb bump-outs and raised crosswalks as traffic calming measures, a reduced 20-mile-per-hour speed limit, and a contraflow lane in all of the one-way sections. Look how popular this bike lane is. Is this what residents were afraid of, having the neighborhood overrun by these types of dangerous bike ruffians, racing their evil machines past the unsuspecting visitors of Oz Park? True, there will be more bikes in Oz Park, but that was never a legit reason not to build the Dickens Greenway. I mean, since when is riding a bike to a park or through a park a bad thing? Bikers just need to slow down and be courteous of everyone using the park. It's not that hard. Now, I do think the argument about spreading resources equitably across the city is fair. That absolutely needs to be the focus of future city projects, making up for years, decades of disinvestment. Just look at this map of the Chicago Bike Network. Here's the north side, and now the south side. Quite a stark difference. Chicago has built more bike lanes where the population density is highest, and where, by extension, the density of bike riders is highest. There is some logic to that. Still, much more progress needs to be made on the south side and west side of the city, and thankfully that's where many in-progress and upcoming projects are. The Dickens Lane should pave the way for more lanes like it, connecting neighborhoods to the lake and lakefront path. And Dickens itself will help extend the network beyond just this one mile. Eventually, it will link to the 606, a three-mile east-west rail trail providing better lakefront bike access to residents of Chicago's west side. And being able to connect on Dickens rather than Armitage will be a huge upgrade. All right, I almost forgot about Armitage. If you've ever ridden these two streets, you know it's like night and day. From Clark all the way to Clybourne, Dickens is entirely residential, with the exception of the Lincoln intersection. Parked vehicles rarely move, and vehicle traffic is limited. Armitage, on the other hand, is a busy commercial area, with bus traffic and shoppers frequently getting into and out of their cars. If you're riding there, you're in the door zone all the way. Dickens is so much better. Even the contraflow lanes are wider than normal, allowing extra space between bikes, doors, and oncoming traffic. If you want to ride with kids down to the zoo, you don't want little Johnny in that Armitage lane. You want him on Dickens. 
Speaking of the zoo, that's interestingly where one of the most controversial parts of the project got installed, and somewhat quietly. At the far end of Dickens, where it runs into Stockton Drive, the original design showed the lane just sort of ending. However, when construction was completed, plastic bollards were installed at the Stockton Terminus, preventing vehicles on Stockton from turning onto Dickens heading west. Here's a little before and after. Naturally, this caused a huge uproar from the driving community and was met with surprised enthusiasm from the biking community. It's just plastic. This could only be temporary. And I think the city is viewing this as an experiment to see what happens. I hope it sticks. The obvious benefit is that the far east end of the Dickens Greenway is a bit quieter. But I also noticed how much foot traffic this area gets and how these improvements are making it more pedestrian friendly, like a mini pedestrian plaza. This isn't just an improvement for people on bikes, it's for everyone. Stockton already gets plenty of traffic from people visiting the zoo, Lincoln Park Conservatory, and the park generally. Eliminating the traffic using Stockton as a through route to Dickens should ultimately be positive. Well, not for those specific drivers, but Chicago is a huge grid. There are plenty of streets that cater to cars. And really, that's the summary in my opinion. Most streets cater to vehicle traffic. If some are designed to make driving more impractical in favor of safer streets for bikes and pedestrians, that's a good thing. Here's hoping that the Dickens Greenway proves how well this type of bike lane works, encouraging Chicago to build more of them across the city. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you next time.